Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. We have discussed about crosstalk definition and type of crosstalk already and in this video we will see about how to fix crosstalk and how do we prevent the crosstalk. In our previous video we understood that switching of the signal in one net when interfering with the adjacent net creates the crosstalk. There are two main effects of crosstalk. First is noise or a glitch and second one is crosstalk delay. We have also seen that one net when interferes with other net, the net causing the crosstalk is the aggressor net and the one which is suffering because of it is the victim net. Diagrammatically, we saw that crosstalk occurs when the switching is happening very close to the victim net. Waveform wise, the explanation is something like this. So this is the waveform of first one is let us say that our aggressor net and the below one is your victim net. So in the victim net, when they both are switching at that time, sometimes because of coupling capacitance, there can be an undershoot or there can be an overshoot. So this spikes represents those overshoots and undershoots. So this one is going above. So this is your overshoot since it is going above the margin and this is also going below. So this is your undershoot and these are the type of shoots that can be because of glitch so this is the type of glitch and there can be a third scenario where is a victim net is also switching and at that time there can be a possibility that transition is going bad so as you can see that this is and since this is an ideal case so there will be obviously this is better transition but just for an example we have taken that this transition is comparatively bad so victim transition is going bad so transition is getting affected here and that is one type of delay. So this is going bad and causing the delay. This is a type of noise that is occurring here. We also learned that noise can occur when a victim is at a constant value. When it is at a constant value, let us say high, there can be a droop in the signal or if it is at a constant low, then at that time there can be a bump in the voltage. And if this droop or this kind of bump crosses the noise margin levels so these noise margin levels are represented by nm low or noise margin high and if that crosses then zero could be represented as one or one could be represented as zero so this is a type of noise also that we saw now the first question that arises here is if there is a data signal going near to the clock and crosstalk occurs then which net is the aggressor net and which net is the victim net and why if you know the answer, you may pause the video and try to answer the question in the comment section. So the answer would be the clock signal is an aggressor net and that is because it must be constantly switching. And even if the victim is also at switching at that time, cross generally what happens is your clock signal will have more strength than the victim. So that is why victim signal will generally be the data signal and crosstalk will occur because aggressor is a clock signal. Now the next question that arises is how do we prevent this crosstalk from happening and if it has occurred how do we fix it. In order to prevent the crosstalk we apply something called as NDR to the clock net. That means it is a non-default rule which generally includes your double spacing and it will be double spacing, double width and double pitch. So double width and double pitch is actually for reducing the latency, but it is in combination with the spacing. So we apply NDR for spacing, which is for reducing the crosstalk. Double spacing means if your normal signal has, let us say 10 micron of spacing in between, that is a minimum spacing rule. Then in the case of clock signal, that spacing rule is doubled and then it will be effectively 20 micron. So double spacing rule is for reducing the cross stock effect or you can say any signal that is going nearby will at least should have double spacing and then only the router should route it so that there will be enough spacing and interaction will be lesser that is one method of reducing the crosstalk or you can say preventing the crosstalk another method is that in some cases if your signal is very strong and then we apply shielding and shielding is also one method of fixing the crosstalk. It will actually shield the victim, but we apply it wherever the aggressor is going so that it should not affect any your normal signals. So let's say this is your normal signal and this is your shield. So shield will be generally a ground signal and then this is your clock signal. So generally we apply a shield to prevent the crosstalk from happening. That is a prevention method. Now, if crosstalk has occurred and 
there is a space left then shielding can be used for for fixing the crosstalk also so if there is some 10 micron of space and ndr was already applied but still crosstalk was occurring and there is a scope of adding the shield then shielding can be added and then shielding can be used for fixing the crosstalk also so it is not just for prevention it can sometimes be used for fixing also but the most common method for fixing the crosstalk is buffer addition so what happens is your victim strength is less and if because of less strength your transition is going bad or the signal is having voltage droops or voltage bumps then buffer addition at the driver input it will be helpful and buffer adding will give you strength to the signal so for strength improvement you can give buffer addition for fixing the crosstalk that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and do give your important feedback in the comment section thank you